here. Is it on? Well, it's supposed to be on. I don't know what's going on with my Instagram stream, but I seem to always have this uh, issue at times. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Friend and Friends podcast on Fridays at 4 p.m. Uh, on Spotify. So today we have a thing little about her. Carolyn yes. is going to share all of her experience with this, and you guys are going to be in for a treat because today's topic, we are talking about fear and kicking its butt. So my dear, you have the floor. Good evening, everyone. My name is Carolyn Murphy, and I'm a I am a mind shift coach and I am a mental health advocate as well as a Christian life coach. Um, I am the author of God, Why Did You Save Me? which is a snapshot of my life uh, from a child until an adult. And it's stemming from childhood trauma. And uh, so I wrote the book uh, in hopes that there are other women that are experiencing or have experienced childhood trauma uh, that hide behind shame and guilt will see that there's life on the other side. Um, but you, So you can come out of hiding and do the work and live a full purposeful life. Mm -hmm. uh, I am a mother of two sons, adults, and um, I'm a lady in waiting, so I haven't gotten married yet. Girl, me too, me too, girl. <laughs> <laughs> but until then, it's me and Jesus. <laughs> Darling, that is um, so important. You said uh, about, you know, shame and hiding. And I guess we can get into that uh, mm -hmm. after I ask you about the topic of fear and why. Why the topic of fear? The topic of fear is... It's huge because um, a lot of us are held back by fear. Mm -hmm. uh, the Lord gave me revelation that fear are the chains around our ankles and our wrists. And that cute little word, the comfort zone, is our prison. And, you know, a lot of times we actually don't realize it, but we're actually hiding and uh, from the world because we've been fed so much poison, mm -hmm. uh, everything from you ain't nothing, you ain't going to be nothing, uh, you ugly and all these other poisonous words. Yes. And people don't realize that those words really take root. And I, I remember thinking back, I fought so hard so that I wouldn't be what they said I was, but I ended up acting out. Uh, and, and it really did take root. So fear keeps you from even trying to venture out to discover your own purpose. Mm -hmm. People can tell you all day that you're born with a purpose, but until you know that within you and began that search. So, so what does that look like? Like, what is knowing, like, what does that search look like? And what does that knowing look like coming from a background where people are telling you, you ain't gonna be nothing. You're not gonna do anything. Like, how do you transition? Like, what does that you know line from A to B look like? It's rocky. It, it's <laughs> rocky. It's, 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 it's a straight line. No, it's quite rocky. Um, for me, I have you. You have something on the inside that keeps tugging at you. Uh, that you want better. You know you're meant for better. But because a lot of times we're a product of our circumstances, we tend to act out of what we've seen. Right. Um, and so, so I, I have to say it's it's a it's a longing, it's a tugging to want more, to be better. Um, and 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 that's what I saw when it comes to my family. I was, you know, the men they didn't graduate from high school, and the women all they did was. You know, get married and, and have babies, but it's like I'm I'm meant for more than that. You and wanted to be a housewife. Yeah. The desire to be married is there, mm -hmm. um, but I now know that that's not the whole world. 
even right. if I give, even if when I get married, I still, I'm still born with my own purpose. Mm -hmm. That doesn't go away. So the search for your, um, your search for your purpose comes as the self-awareness increases. Mm -hmm. So for me, my faith, I am a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the more I dug into his word and began to internalize it, believe it, walk it out, the, the, the light bulb came on, the scales off my eyes came off. Like, so what does the internalizing look like? Because, you know, you, they say from ages zero to eight that those are the most impressionable years of children. And then from then on, it's like anything that we learn from our foundation um, is added on top of what we've been conditioned to think and do from those ages. Like, what what would that look like for a person to internalize? Because I know for a while, self-worthiness was something that um, I struggled with. Mm -hmm. And also the fear, like we talked about. Mm -hmm. So now that I'm in a space where, like you said, you talked about earlier, the, being uncomfortable, um, that right now looks like doing these kind of podcasts mm -hmm. or just doing something that is just outside of my regular going to work and things like that. Like what, what did your, like, what did your journey look like in that space to internalize? Like, I guess you, you use the word, you use the Bible in order to help you stand yes. strong. Is that yeah. what I mean? Yes. Um, you know, there are scriptures in there that talk about who you are. I am wonderfully made. Um, and then your daily affirmations, because you're going to always have these thoughts, whether they come from you, because uh, we a lot of times we digest what people have said to us. Mm -hmm. And so you're fighting against your own self for the most part, as well as people on the outside. So the, the word talks about casting down those thoughts that, you know, rises up against the knowledge of God. And so, like I said, you have to eat, sleep and breathe the word mm -hmm. and and you have to cut off toxic people and it's certain things you can't listen to as far as music it's certain things you can't look at uh on the tv so for me being a single woman uh if i want to keep my flesh under control i can't be watching people smooching all over the place because mm -hmm. that's going to make my spirit rise yeah. so I said all that to say that to internalize it, you have to do your daily devotions. You have to do your daily affirmations. You have to be in prayer as often as you can be, because you're, again, you're fighting. Even if you, you know, get rid of some all the toxic people in your life, you still got this to contend with. Mm -hmm. So you got to cast them down. You got to, the moment that a negative thought rises up. Nope, I am not that. The word says I am this, 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 and this. I will be, you know, so you have to literally fight yourself. And that's mm -hmm. that's that's what I mean by internalizing it. And after a while, you'll believe, you start to believe what you've been declaring all that time. Mm -hmm. So we're we're counteracting. Um, the things that we don't want to accept. We're basically creating boundaries. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. We're creating boundaries with things that we no longer want to accept for ourselves. Yes. So if we did hear that we're stupid, um, what would be like a scripture affirmation that you would say that we could apply to that? Um, I would say that um, I am loved. I am forgiven. I am knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. Um, I am intelligent. I mean, it's, it don't have to be anything exuberant, simple affirmations. I am knowledgeable. I am smart. Um, and again, it, you got a phone and certain people call your phone. You don't have to answer it. That you part. Literally have to, you literally have to fight to keep your peace. Mm -hmm. Well, y'all heard it. We got to fight to keep our peace. And it also sounded like we needed consistency, like consistency application of uh, the things that we want to see to keep ourselves on track with what it is, the results that we want for our own lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, breaking up with fear, what 
so you used um, you used the affirmation and internalizing uh, the word in order to keep your foundation. Were there other techniques or other applications or other things that you did to also help yourself break up break up with fear? Therapy. Therapy. Okay. Therapy, whether it's individual and or group uh, support groups. Um, there is a wealth of resources out there. It's just a matter of finding them. Okay. Um, so when in my early years, I did counseling, but it was sporadic. It was mm -hmm. not consistent. Okay. Uh, at the same time, I was a single mother. And so when you're a single mother, you don't prioritize you. You, you the last thing, you the last thing on the total pole. Um, and so, but once the Lord blessed me to get in a space where I had to face me, the man in the mirror. My sons are gone, you know, grown and gone. Uh, at the time I was, you know, kept caring for my mom. And I remember hearing the Holy Spirit say, because my mom died in November, 2017, about April, 2018, I heard the Holy Spirit say, all that has had you bound is now gone. Mm -hmm. I said, my goodness. So that let me know it's just it was my turn. Your it turn was, to take care of yourself. Me. It was my turn to take care of myself. Uh, and it was my turn to let God take care of me. Because mm -hmm. I you know, when you when you have been ex when you've experienced childhood trauma, especially being violated, mm -hmm. um, you begin to you begin to build a wall and you don't know it. You mm -hmm. begin to build a wall that's so thick and so tall. You are you're in prison because that's your comfort zone. And so God had God has been chipping away at that wall hmm. that I built because I didn't trust nobody. I didn't even trust God. I'm just about to ask you what the wall looks like. That Dang. Was, you the didn't wall trust God. was mm -mm, I didn't trust God. Mm -mm. The wall was I I had boyfriends, but I didn't let them get too close. Mm. I, and, and see, I, I was molested about five or six. My childhood is blocked. And and then I was raped at 17. Mm. And then hearing the poison from my mom, who was 16. So I already had a bad taste in my mouth for me. Yeah. So and that's why I tell people whatever is in us is in us. It takes the Holy Spirit to keep it down. So. So I was, I was like a snake back in the day when it mm -hmm. came to in. Um, Cause I, I had a boyfriend for each day and oh. I told them, oh yeah, it was bad. It was okay, bad. I, I need to study your playbook now. <laughs> and I was acting like a man, you know, they had, they had their, you know, mountains of women they can call. And for me, my negative mindset, it was just awful. And I remember telling one guy, what you don't do, I got 40 look just like you. So that also can be like a mechanism that was a part of the wall, right? Yes. To keep them at bay. So like if you yes. didn't like what one was saying, you would go to another and yes. get what it is that whatever that fix is, right? Yes. Yes. So when you when when you have been traumatized you latch on to negative coping mechanisms, mm -hmm. whether it's drinking, overeating, sexing, mm -hmm. um, drugs, whatever. And mm -hmm. it's just it's just a band-aid. It's just a quick fix because when you get done, you're still in the same situation, if not worse. Mm -hmm. And so when you finally come to the end of you, which is where I had come, it's like, okay, I I'm tired. Because there's only so long you can run. It's only so long you can wear this mask, you know, that you put up. And that's the thing with me. I was also in prison, but I also had a mask. And I, my mask was the smiley face. I smiled all the time. People didn't know what was going on with me. That's why they say now, check on your strong friends, the ones that's smiling all the time. Yeah. Uh, you know, we go around a lot saying to, just to people in general, Hey, how are you doing? And mm -hmm. do you realize like there's that automatic response of I'm doing good. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. I try to make it a practice like, okay, 
if you're asking me how I'm doing, do you want mm -hmm. the uh, do you want the PC version or do you mm -hmm. want the real version? Because mm -hmm. today I'm not feeling well. Mm -hmm. My boyfriend just dumped me or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I think when we show up presently, right? Mm -hmm. We don't realize that we are now open in the space of connectivity with another person. Yeah. And now we can be open to either share or have this dialogue. Yes. I, one of the things that I do is like, I not only say, how are you? But now I say, how are you feeling today? Hmm. Well, how are you feeling today? <laughs> as the most rat <laughs> but I'm excited I'm excited about what God is doing and and then especially if the Lord has put in my spirit that something is going on with that person and they mm -hmm. gave they give me that superficial answer I literally get in their face no how are you today wow. I've done it because you know again a lot of people don't think are you you really not interested in how I feel so I'm just gonna give you that superficial answer right Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. I probably start crying. I know back in the day, but that's <laughs> okay. That is okay because we have learned, especially as being uh, um, men and women of color, we have learned that asking for help and crying is a sign of being soft, being yeah. weak. And my thing is, we're not made of pipe material, so there is softness when it comes to all of us. I would hate to meet anybody who doesn't feel anything or don't have a conscience. So crying is a release. I'm so glad you said that because um, earlier you mentioned that there's support groups and um, I know I've joined your uh, group on Sundays. Uh, is it twice, twice a month that you have it? Mm -hmm. Oh man, and we are up in there talking about Ooh, some vulnerable stuff. Some of us are crying. Some of us are, you know, just releasing some of the stuff that we've experienced. Mm -hmm. So thank you for creating that space. Praise the Lord. We'll put that in the chat for later for. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, about fear, how does fear limit us or prevent us from fulfilling our purpose? Well, it, it's a little story that's that says that ask, where is the richest place on earth? And the story goes where the cemetery is the richest place on earth. And it's because many people die in their fear, which kept them from discovering their purpose, um, venturing off into their dreams and aspirations, their visions. Uh, so fear will keep you shackled really in the past. Mm -hmm. Fear keeps you shackled in the past. You may get a glimpse. You may have a desire where you want to be. But because fear has gripped you so, you're too scared to, to venture out. So fear keeps you from really knowing who you are. And if you desire a relationship with the Lord, it keeps you from even having that intimate relationship with him. It keeps you from having intimate relationships with people. Because you're going to always look at a person out of the side of your eye wondering, is you going to do something or say something that you, you know, that reminds me of the last person. Mm. So fear keeps you isolated. Mm. I was thinking about a time where um, I had first gotten married and um, I told my mom I was going to school. I know I'll be talking a lot about my mom, but it's the only reference I have, y'all. <laughs> she probably gonna kick my behind, but <laughs> so at the time, like I just had my last child and I was getting ready to um I decided that I wanted to go to school. And then she turned around and tells me, Why don't you just go to work and raise your family? And something inside of me just felt very uncomfortable. And I got internally angry about that. Mm -hmm. And I, after looking back at that story, 
I realized that that was a projection of a fear that maybe my mom had because she didn't finish college or didn't finish high school. And have you had something like that happen to you to where like, yes. could you yes. share a story oh, yeah. like that? That's okay. Well, I mean, I've had so many of them. Growing up as a child, I was told, so my mom had me when she was 16. I'm the oldest mm. of a total of six children. And my mother, I didn't know she had, you know, experienced trauma until I was in my early 40s. But I was told that I was going to be just like my mom. I was fast, uh, fast, and I was going to have a baby by the time I was 16. So I remember returning 16. And I remember being, see, I didn't, I don't have a baby. Mm. But I was the type of person, you told me something that I couldn't do. I made it a point to show you different. Mm. Um, I was told that I was ugly. I was told I was dumb. I didn't know I was pretty or good looking or however you want to say it until the boys started gawking off to me. Mm. So, like I said, we internalize all of this stuff. I, you know, when you're a child, you're asking about you're asking about your father. I remember asking about my father, and uh, my mom told me, "Well, he doesn't he doesn't want you." Oh. And oh yeah, you know. But they were sixteen, right. and so. Uh, but I later find out that his father. Once, once he discovered that he had another girl pregnant, shipped him to California. Oh. So, so my mom was purely angry. And when you don't, when you don't get rid of anger, it's okay to be angry. It don't get me wrong. But when you sit with that anger, it takes root and it gets worse. It becomes you come you become bitter. You become wrathful. You become revengeful. So it's okay to be angry. That's why the Bible says, be ye angry, but sin not. You can't sit with anger too long. And that's why that's why there's a lot of angry men and women walking around now that if you speak to them, you look like they'll bite your head off. Oh, totally. You can feel it. Like you can oh, feel yeah. the energy. They don't yeah. even have to say anything. It's in the walk, right? It's in like they that look at you. Yeah, it's like they got that, um, you know, that rest, that, what is that, resting bitch face? <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, and, and, and that's my thing. I tell people now, forgive whoever has done anything to you. Because, I, I mean, it took, it, it's not going to go overnight. You've got to get, you got to do the work and you got to get someone to help you. You can't do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I put a post that said, forgive your parents for what they did and what they didn't do for what they didn't know. Because if you think about it, you only do what you know to do in this day and time. So our parents back then, they didn't really love on their children. They, you know, their love was I put food on the table and clothes on your back and a roof over your head. They didn't tell us that, you know, that, that, that they loved us. You just knew it. Right. You just there's this, it. Yeah, there's this uh, book by Ayala Van Zandt called When I Cried. And when I was going through a divorce, I had blamed everything on my ex-husband, like all the things that we experienced, as if I didn't have anything to do with it, right? Like I was the angel. Uh-uh. I, of course, I had to come to a place where I had to take ownership of the things that I um, contributed to the dissolution, to the breakdown. So anyways, in her book, I had gotten to a point to where I couldn't get over like him. I couldn't get over being angry. Every time I thought about him, like I could feel my body tensing up and being angry about the things that he said and did. And then in her book, she says, some things you just have to blame on ignorance so that way it has a place to sit in order for us to move forward. So like you said earlier, for the things that we didn't know, mm -hmm. blame that on ignorance so that we can move forward onto the next place because That's then we powerful. can open that story, right? That's powerful. Yes, yes. 
Uh, and the thing is, you letting go of anger. It is not. It's not saying that what the other person did was okay. You, it's not saying that. You are making peace with your past so that you can move forward. Because again, that's that's a chain around your neck. I would even say, you already being you already chained with fear mm. and whatever else you're dealing with. So the more things we're dealing with, anger and bitterness, those are more chains that's holding mm. us back. And some of us never learn who we really are. Can you mm. imagine if the pain were gone, all of the pain and the different things that has held us back? Can you imagine how your life would be if all that stuff was gone? It's hard to even imagine that. Who are you telling? Because I was... <clears throat> No, were you going to say something? I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Mm -mm. I was thinking like when we come to that place of what that looks like for us, it first has to be like <clears throat> something like you said earlier about internalizing it, right? Mm -hmm. That imagination of, so I, I have now internalized that as, look, I have been showing up for other people. Mm -hmm. I've not been showing up for me. Mm -hmm. And my sister, who is my best friend, her name is Fran too. <laughs> <laughs> she, um, she gave me an ultimatum one day, not directly, but indirectly. She's very good at that. <laughs> and you know something, and it takes those type of people to call right. you out. Right. Uh, it, it takes those type of people. Because if, if you just got yes people around you, there is no growth. Oh it ain't gonna be no growth. She's she is she'll keep me accountable. So she said to me one day, she's like, Fran, you know, I noticed that the people that I have shared time with went to their parties. Like I show up for them. But when I ask people to come to my events, where mm. are they? And I was like, dang, I have to take a look at myself and like apologize. I had to apologize for the type of friend that I was being, mm -hmm. for not showing up for her. And then thought to myself, do I really want to live without this lady in my life? And I'm like, no, I don't. Uh, she has been there for me through thick and thin. Mm -hmm. So she caused me to be accountable to, to her. And then that was the model for me to become accountable to myself. I didn't get there right away because mm -hmm. Five years later, I was still do -do -do, like a, <laughs> like a pinball machine. <laughs> and like you said, life isn't like a straight line. It's, no, it's all I wish it were. So, yeah. going back to the showing up for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Once I began to create those boundaries and show up for myself, then I could internalize that. Oh, hey, mm -hmm. I am important. Showing mm -hmm. up for me mm -hmm. is, is important because nobody is going to do that for me. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes more clear on the things that I want to pursue and the people that I want to spend time with. Because mm -hmm. the thing is, is that we prioritize everything and everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why we end up with an empty cup, mad and angry. Damn. And, um, and so... When I, when I told you in 2018, that was a pivotal time in my life. And the Lord told me not to link up with a man as far as a relationship. He said to just wrap myself in him. Mm. And he said, because you've been pouring from an empty cup for years. And that's what the Holy Spirit told me. That's why you're so mean and grouchy. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably why I was so mean too. <laughs> just I mean, Because what you remember, you know how to always say, you know, I'm always getting the short end of the stick. Mm. And it goes back to what your sister said. You're always pouring out to others, going for people, you know, being a rescue. I have a friend now that called me a lifesaver. Mm. Literally called me a lifesaver because every time she called, I'm there. But I treat, I try to treat people the way I want to be, you know, treated. You mm. may not get it back, but at least you can sleep at night. Mm. 
That's my thing. And then I know how it feels to not be wanted. Mm. I had a friend to tell me, I, I want somebody to love me and not tolerate me. Oh, that was heavy. I said, oh my God. And I said, explain. I was going to say, could you please explain that to the people that are listening? Honey, when a person tolerates you, their patience is that small. Mm -hmm. And so they won't go the long way with you. You, you can, you know, I can only tolerate you so long. And then after that, it's like, you know, something I can't deal with her no more. Mm -hmm. I'll stop answering the phone, stop coming around. But when you truly want me in your life and you love me, then my downfalls or my, you know, um, my my small mindedness or whatever, mm. it won't get on your nerve and you just walk away. Mm. So to tolerate a person, you have very little patience for them. Mm. You barely even want to talk to them. I've, I've, I've done and been. I've been treated that way and I've done that too. Mm -hmm. Ooh, thank God for self-compassion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I have another question for you. What helped you to break up with fear? Uh, the stuff we just got you talking about. I mean, <laughs> getting tired. Because I, I had to get to the end of my rope. I had to get, I had to get tired of me. Mm -hmm. Because I kept saying, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. And one day I said, girl, shut up. <laughs> You got tired of hearing yourself say I got tired. over and over again. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Okay. And the thing is, is that, and it, and it took me back when I was young, people used to promise me things and wouldn't deliver. Mm. And so I got finally years. I finally got tired of me. Look, you either going to do it or you ain't. And it, and it really became a life and death situation for me because mm -hmm. the suicide thoughts became more prominent. Oh, wow. And the last thing, I think it was 2012, when I last heard the enemy tell me, go on in there and take a handful of pills. Won't nobody miss you. Yeah. And the, so my thing is, you are already being kicked in the teeth, kicked in the butt by life. And, and then you were in isolation. See, the, the enemy knows how to get you. For real. He rip, And so when you are already kicked in the teeth, you ain't stuff ain't going right for you. People have walked away, promised you things and not delivered. And, and then those things in the back of your mind with the poison that people used to say, those things roll back around. Well, maybe I am, you know, ain't going to be nothing. Maybe I ain't going to, maybe I... Mm. But that, that's from, I, a from, from an empty cup, huh? That's yes. from a space from being, pouring out yes. to others and, and not feeding yourself in a way. Yes. And then and then there are some people, I'm just going to be real with you, there are people in our lives don't even deserve our tears, our time, or our hooks. So what does that look like? What what do those kind of people look like? Because, uh, well, like, I, I, for example... Well, you know, if you got a if you got a quote unquote friend that only calls you when they want something, hmm. you uh, you know, just like um, I remember the Holy Spirit telling me that because I'm in ministry, and He said some people are spiritual leeches. I'm like, what? He said, you know what a leech is? I said, yeah, that's ugly. You know, a leech gets under your skin and suck the blood out of you. Life, right? It is sucking well, the life out of you. Sucking the life out. And so that's people sucks the life out of you. And that's why I had to adopt this saying, I am not your trash can. Mm. You're not going to always keep coming to me, dumping on me. Mm. And, and, and so, and that weighs you down. Mm. And see, I'm the type of person, I'm a giver. So if I can't give, and see, in my mind back then, if I can't give you a piece of money to help you out of your situation, I, I, I ain't nothing, you know, I'm not doing anything. And so, I, so those people who always call you pulling on you. So the Lord was telling me spiritual leeches are those, if you're in ministry and you have a gift, they're mm -hmm. calling you, what is the Lord saying? Well, you tell them what the Lord is saying, they go straight away and still not even do what the. What the <laughs> Lord. 
And then, <laughs> and then six months later, come back to my what is the Lord saying? Mm -mm. But they worse off than what they last you saw them because they didn't do what you see what I'm saying. I do. So, it's, 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 it's so what and so if you have some people that's been in your life and you it for years every time you see them calling something something in you just like you start up. nodding up and tense up and all that and then if you go on and say okay go on out to the phone and as soon as they say hey and then all of a sudden it's just vomit word vomit you'd be like dog really mm -hmm. I was having a good day until I answer the phone. Mm -mm. So we know who these friends are. <laughs> it's just a fact. It's just a fact. Do you want to trim your own tree? Because God will do it for you. Wow. He'll do it for you. Either he can do it for us or we can do it for ourselves. I mean, that is mm -hmm. the power of self-will, right? Mm -hmm. The power of boundaries of saying no. <clears throat> and I think uh, one of the things in a lot of cultures, like saying no, is like, oh, no, I'm, you know, we got to help out and do this. Um, no is a complete sentence. It really is. Uh, it I really think, is. It, you don't I, even have to explain that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a, I think some people have this dis disconnection of like when you, it's the feeling Definitely. of what the repercussions will be after you say no, mm -hmm. because there's this backup of the person saying, oh, well, why, you know, them trying to change your mind mm -hmm. or trying to manipulate you emotionally mm -hmm. or whatever those things are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, so for you, once you've like cut off those uh, people or like you said, like these leeches and identify them, what are some of the things that you've done to replenish yourself? It takes a while to, um, and I'm the type of person I love hard. Mm -hmm. So to remove someone out of my life, I was unable to do it. God had to do it for me. Okay. But I fought him on it. I'm not going to even lie because mm -hmm. you want to, you want to keep, you want to stay with the familiar, even though it's bad for you. But for me, I, my attention turned to my relationship with the Lord. My attention turned to me, self-development. Mm -hmm. So from 2018 to now, it's strictly me and the Lord and self-development. Because mm -hmm. I remember being 20 years old and I was like, Lord, I want a husband that does this. He got to be this tall. He got to be. And the Lord said, you ain't even that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I tell people, God Check. will meet you where you at. Check. He will meet you where you at. <laughs> And, and that's what a lot of us are doing now. We want men that's six feet tall, you know, making six, seven, eight figures. And, and But then you have to turn a mirror on you. Well, what? Because you got to compliment this man. Mm, say so, that. If, so if you, if you, you know, if you ain't in school trying to better yourself or certification, something, all you're going to do is bring that man down. You're just going to mm -hmm. wear his pockets out and bring him down. And and they won't even attract that kind of man. They'll just attract yeah. whatever you, whatever's going on inside of you, whatever yeah. your belief system is, yeah. wherever that level is at. If you are vibrating here and this is yeah. your level, that's what yeah. you attract. It. But if that's why we're all here, yep. with the same man, year mm -hmm. in and year out. Right, with different mean. names, right? <laughs> that's it. Different man. Hit John, Joe, Bill, all <laughs> in the same spirit. And people are like, how did I end up with you? But then the thing is, is that because we don't do the work, we don't mm -hmm. allow ourselves time to heal. We end up falling into another relationship that's worse than the last. Man. And, you know, I'm glad you said that because, like, people don't even take time to pause mm -hmm. and heal from that last relationship. Mm hmm there's so many emotional wounds, unanswered questions, mm -hmm. but they want to resolve Trump, right? Resolve right. issues, right. and we're still talking about the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Is so the the trauma that is the 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 catalyst for all the negative. In my book, I have a chapter in there, um, Russian roulette. I'm I'm living a life of Russian roulette, Ooh. and this is all what we're talking about. 
in and out of unhealthy, toxic relationships, mm. having illicit sex, not protected. Mm. You know, we're, we're drugging, you know, nowadays, and I've never smoked weed, but nowadays weed mm. ain't weed. People are lacing that stuff with everything. Right. So you, you can't trust folk. So, it, so I lived a life of Russian roulette in and out of relationship with different men. Mm. Wow. That was my point of drug. I can resonate. Definitely a resonate. Is a drug is a drug. Or a <laughs> right. No matter what form it takes. <laughs> no matter what form it takes. And so you have to you have to decide to get off that miracle round. Mm. The problem is, is that we end up being on that miracle round 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Life has passed you by. Right. Mm. So there's the two things I want to end with, um, because we're going to wrap up this session, we're going to go into the round robin so I can ask you some personal questions. Okay. So um, one thing is, what would you share with people about fear that you want them to leave with? And then if you could share with them a little bit more about the book and what they can expect to get from it. Fear, just remember that fear and your comfort zones are not your friends. They are the chains and the prisons that's holding you back. If you know within your heart that you're meant for more, you've got to let go of fear. And you're not alone in this, in this journey. There are others who are out there. There are others that are resources that you can latch on to. Mm. And as far as my book, it's, it's, it's a tearjerker because it, it describes things that I have experienced, such as when I was six, a 33 year old man tried to insert himself in me, but couldn't. So he hurt himself trying to. My mom came in, he heard her. He whispered in my ear, don't you tell her or else I will kill her. I never told her. She heard about us when I, she was in the car with me and I was making a therapy appointment and I was trying not to let her hear me, but she heard me tell this therapist what happened and she was livid. She was livid because I had never told her, mm. but she didn't, she didn't approve of mental health either. Mm. You know, back in the day, they tell you, what stays in the house, what goes on in the house stays in the house. Stays in the house yes. It just gets swept on the rug. Well, I've learned that the rug grows. That dirt, that mountain of dirt that's under there, that is just festering. Yeah. So you so the things that happen in our household, household, if Uncle Frank touched me and I didn't say nothing, then he touched the other sister, we didn't say nothing. Now he touching the other cousin. Come on now. Yeah. What is it gonna end? No, nah, totally. I mean, I know when you first told me that story, I was crying mm -hmm. because it's something that was very relevant to something that my daughters have experienced. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not right. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you for being vulnerable with us. And I'll put all of Caroline's information uh, inside of the uh, YouTube video for everyone. But for those that are watching, if you have a question, please feel free to drop it in the chat. Um, so that way maybe Caroline can answer that for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me just, thank you. So let me just uh, refresh my social media here to see if there's any questions here. Okay. So why, while we're waiting, the first thing that, the first question I'll ask, but don't answer it yet. Okay. <laughs> okay. What's your favorite funny story to tell people? Uh, let me see. Oh. What is your favorite funny story to tell people? And I don't see anything on social media, no questions. I don't see any questions. So, all right, darling, you have the floor. What favorite. is your favorite funny funny story to tell people? Wow, let me see. Uh, I'm trying to... <laughs> wow. You put me on the spot here. I'm trying to think. Um, we can come back to that one. Well, okay. I I liked uh, when my sons were, I have two sons 
And so I used to wrestle with them mm -hmm. and they didn't, I used to tell them that I was a tomboy. They didn't believe it. So I used to wrestle them and pin, we used to, you know how you play wrestling? Yeah. I used to wrestle them and pin them to the floor <laughs> and they, be, they would be hollering and screaming. <laughs> Like, man, you strong. <laughs> they found out today, huh? Yeah. <laughs> like, so, oh, mom. <laughs> yeah. And so it, it was many of those type of stories, you know, them going grocery shopping with me, um, a singing, you know, how you would grab a, a, a spoon or grab a, a mm -hmm. brush. We Home karaoke. Those, yes. <laughs> those are funny times with me that I miss. I wouldn't want to go back, but. So <laughs> you're like, I miss you, but stay back in the past. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you for sharing. Uh, our next question is, are you an introvert or an extrovert? Very introvert. This thing in front of the camera is, oh my gosh. This, oh, this so you're outside your comfort zone right now. Oh God, yes. That oh, was, okay, good. Yes. <laughs> that, that is one of the things that the Holy Spirit told me in 2018. He said, I'm going to kick you out of your comfort zone. And I told the Lord, no, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm yeah, good. girl. I'm good. I'm, so I'm very, that's so my I, fear I, that I'm breaking up with now. <laughs> Say it again. I'm sorry. That's my fear that I'm breaking up with now, being in front ah, of the camera. Okay. Well, girl, I mean, I'm sure we'll have more com more of these conversations so that way you can have an opportunity to exercise your extroverts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an introvert to the heart. All right. Your last question is, what's your biggest pet peeve? Playing with my intelligence. Ooh. And I say that is my thing is if I'm opening up to you, telling you something that's, you know, I'm being open and honest and you're turning around and uh, those narcissist people, they, they're the ones who get on my nerves. <laughs> the ones that can't see themselves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, cause I, I, my ex was a narcissist mm -hmm. and he made it seem like it was all that I was the problem. Mm -hmm. And after so long, you begin to think that. And mm -hmm. so playing with my intelligence is, I will tell you something. No, you didn't tell me that. It, uh, Cause so enough of that, you'd be like, well, maybe I didn't tell them. Mm. That is a pet peeve. And then petty, being petty. That's another one. Oh, I, I remember working at a job and honey, this woman was jealous of me and I didn't know. Oh. She, I got wrote up because she didn't like how I sounded on the walkie talkie and mm -hmm. she didn't like my facial, facial, uh, features or whatever. And then she didn't like my body language. Hmm. That's petty. Sounds like insecurity. On her part. Yeah, on her part. Yeah. And that's something I, I can't do. I can't do petty. Okay. Y'all heard it. She doesn't like narcissists or petty people. <laughs> <laughs> so, Carolyn, thank you so much for joining us. Um, if you could let people know where to find you on social media or your website, and then I will add that to the video link once uh, it's downloaded. Yes, I'm on Facebook, uh, Carolyn, Carolyn J. Murphy with LinkedIn. Uh, my business firm foundation is on LinkedIn as well as Facebook. Uh, I'm on Facebook, TikTok and instagram and i'm on pinterest too but i'm not just working it good um so i'm kind of all over uh but i do have a website that's under construction right now and it is firmfoundationsco.com okay well everybody thank you so much for joining us carolyn thank you so much for your time if you can stay on for a moment and uh everybody have a great weekend i think i'll be seeing y'all tomorrow because i have one more guest speaker but Till then, stay out of trouble. <laughs>